Welcome back to Israel News and Views. Uh, Ron, you told me last week about you and Alana, your wife, going down to Gaza, I mean right to Gaza, and it was kind of intriguing what you did. You shared it with our whole congregation about that. Tell us. Well, uh, let, me, let me just go back a little bit. My wife, who I'm so proud of, uh, we live in a city called Ranana, which is about an hour from here. Uh, she, with some other ladies, organized an effort in the schools in Renana to put together what we call chavilot, care packages uh, of food, socks, underwear, things that you typically wouldn't want to get in the mail, but that soldiers need. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was amazing, the outpouring. They, I think over a thousand uh, care, pa care packages were put together. And then I was in the States, uh, even before I got back, she made her first trip down there where she literally went right up to the border. She got access and they, were, they weren't just, you know, unloading a whole bunch of boxes to uh, somebody who would then give them to the soldiers. They were putting the boxes in the soldier's hand. Hmm. So, so I got back uh, to Israel Friday night, had a wonderful Shabbat dinner with my family. And then in the morning, my wife wakes me up at 8 a.m. and says, Come on, we're driving to Gaza. <laughs> I said, what? Is this, are, are, is this a nightmare? Or <laughs> right am, I, am I awake or what? Yeah. And so we got in the car and uh, we were in a caravan of three different vehicles. And we went uh, as close as we could go till we got to a checkpoint. And we told them that we had brought uh, care packages for the soldiers. Um, we had special t-shirts on that signified what organization we were from. And um, they would not let us in. So we waited there for about a half hour. And then a, an officer showed up and my wife appealed him and said, hey, listen, we've got tons of care packages in here. We've got toothpaste, we've got toilet paper, we've got food. And he said, come on, I'll take you in. And when he, once he took us in, he just left. <laughs> so we're suddenly in between where nobody's allowed to go and the actual front line of fighting. And it was so quiet and so surreal. And yet we felt completely safe and protected. So we went, and the soldiers were in different divisions. You would, you'd come across one group, there'd be several tanks, and then you know, you'd go another mile, and there'd be another group of soldiers. Yeah. So what did they think when they, they saw you bringing these care packages? They were so happy. Yeah. They were so happy. Uh, the morale w was high, unlike the last war in Lebanon, which mm -hmm. was, uh, I think everybody agrees, was mismanaged. And uh, the, these soldiers were just thrilled, smiles on their faces. And I think uh, there's probably some pictures on the screen right now. We can't show all the pictures that we took for security reasons, but uh, you can see that they were just so blessed and we had our picture taken with them and we gave them, uh, there's one where I'm literally take, walking up to a tank and, and handing uh, a soldier uh, a care package. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we went to another area. Um, uh, we have a friend of ours who's a commander of a, an elite unit and he got permission to take us, again, I, I don't know how close we were. I just, I know that on the other side of wherever we were was not safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took, he got permission to take us Well, there. actually with rocket fire from Gaza, you're not safe even, what, 30 kilometers away. Right, in fact, you know, Ashkelon, which is where my in-laws live, uh, I, after this was all over, we went to have lunch with them. Then I drove back and as I was driving back, the sirens, began to go off in Ashkelon as, as rockets began to fall there. Mm. So we were much closer than that. So you had your in-laws living in your house, but you were in the States. That was convenient. Th that's another story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I went to the States because my in-laws were living at, yeah. in my house. Now they had to, they had to evacuate because of uh, the rocket fire. Uh, there was a wonderful uh, brother in Tel Aviv, uh, Yaakov Damkani, a believer who owns a hotel uh, his ministry owns a hotel and they opened it up to anyone from the south to come and to stay there and my in-laws were there for a time they were with us mm -hmm. but when we were in um, uh, in this area that he got us into right close to the border uh, we again we we're handing out packages and the soldiers are so happy and thrilled and they took us to this they said come on you got to see this so we went through this little maze and then there was this wall and on the wall and again I'll put a picture up of it up on the uh, on the screen, there were just tons of notes. All these notes were from kids for our, from our city, Renana, that had written uh, notes to the soldiers, encouragement, and um, it was it was it was an amazing time. When it was all over, and I was driving away, going, I went and had a meal with my in-laws in Ashkelon. Then I'm driving home. It was I, I just realized this was probably one of the most exciting, amazing things I've ever done in my life. I'm not a soldier. Mm -hmm. I've never been close to fighting. I don't like to be in areas like that, but there was just the grace and blessing of God on it. Mm -hmm. 
sure it wasn't just jet lag from your trip back from the States? Well, it may have been because I almost fell asleep driving home. Yeah. But no, it was just, um, it was nice to know that with these guys risking their lives every day, 24 hours a day, we are able to do something just small to bless them. That's great. So maybe we could just say a, a quick prayer for the soldiers. Let's do that. Lord, we thank you that uh, you gave these soldiers wisdom as they went in. It was a very risky situation, Lord. We thank you that for a uh, minimal loss of life. Uh, we pray, oh God, that uh, you would, uh, the ceasefire, Lord, would last a long time. We pray that somehow uh, your Holy Spirit would move across that, that region, Lord. We pray that you'll bring revelation to the people's eyes, Lord, that you are the Savior. You are the Prince of Peace, Lord. We know that there's no a treaty that could be signed that we could trust in to, to ensure peace and only your peace can provide that security and and we know Lord that it's the peace with God that yes. is really the important thing and when we have peace with you Lord then we can have peace with one another and so we pray that you would come and reveal yourself yes. to the Arab peoples to the Jewish peoples Lord that you would um, bring your peace plan to this situation in the Middle East, we ask in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.